Hey guys, it is Yazi. Um, I a bit of a different deck profile this time, um, but I made top eight two days in a row in um, two RTNs. I came fourth on the first day, and then I became eighth on the second day in two different RTNs. And I thought rather than you know waiting around, I thought I'd do the deck profile. You know, I'd love to go out and make a video for it and everything, but because where I am right now, I can't even leave my house, basically. And while it's all fresh, you know, I don't look too fresh, um, I thought I'd do the deck profile now and show you guys everything that I've learned recently. And along with this, I will be doing a guide to Rhino. So where you should be, what you should be doing, what you should be playing, and it's all going to start off with my deck. So, Reiner, um, an amazing hero if you know how to use him effectively. He's a very odd hero to play, because all of his attacks aren't the strongest, but it's when they're paired together, and you're able to play in a very defensive, blocky, and then also aggressive build as well, just with the one hero. So, I'll start off with equipment. So, this is my 90 card CC deck, and... This isn't a Claws build, this is a Claws and Club build. Reinar needs to be very versatile to get anywhere in, in the game these days. Um, I was using my Claws against extremely defensive decks, so decks like Bolton, decks like, um, uh, like Dash in a way, where you want to force as much damage as possible, while Club is for the aggressive decks. Um, Sometimes I also use club against Katsu. Um, the fact that they can, you know, combo off and everything, even though they have all these defense reactions, still means that they are an, an aggressive deck because they're able to play very aggressively. So, and yeah, Mandible Claws. They're very good. Not every single game you want them. Um, but yeah, club very strong card especially with a lot of the cards i have in my deck i made sure that club was the main essential part of this deck and one of the reasons why i was able to beat every single chain except for one player which was hayden dale in top eight you need to learn how to use both of these in your same deck then we have our standard arknight skull cap um if you don't have one I think you need one. It is an extremely powerful blocking equipment and gets you into the late game. Scab skin leathers. Tunic. Um, I really like Tunic over the day. When I was versing chains, I was using Tunic for just blocking arcane damage and that's it. And then the one Goliath gauntlet. I personally do not like gambler's gloves. Gambler's gloves do suck in the worst case scenarios. And you should never really want to roll um, scab skins. With the way the deck is built, you'll see how and why I chose to ch play Goliath Gauntlet. But the main reason why you play it is because you can go C and C for eight, which is an amazing card to uh, to put on. Um, and yeah, basically forces an entire hand block or get rid of their um, a lot of their equipment pieces. And then we're, we we respect Wizard because Wizard is a very strong deck still, even versus Rhino, Skullhorn, and Null Room Gloves. And the Null Room Gloves are also there for um, chain plays as well. So we'll go on to the deck. We have our nine Barraging Beatdowns. Um, it's our only card in our deck that we run multiples of. Every other card is a uh, like a one color card, um, but yeah, barraging beatdown. The thing about this meta and probably the future metas to come is that barraging beatdown doesn't care if you're using it as a combo card anymore. You just you can just play a barraging beatdown and swing with a, with a card. Most heroes are able to gain a lot of advantage off um, multiple cards. So you know where two cards. Technically, you only deal six damage. Sometimes those 
cards can deal up to like let's say uh, like 10, uh, 10 damage at some cases. It's hard to explain but just playing one barraging swinging weapon or comboing off with a lot of them is yeah it, it's barraging beatdown. Um, we have Blood Rush Bellows. Blood Rush Bellows are uh, amazing and with your club build, you mainly want to use Blood Rush Bellows to refill your hand and draw into an arsenal card that you want to play. So you can go like uh, Blood Rush Bellows, discard a 6, then swing with weapon. Um, you know, if you can put Barraging Beatdowns or anything over the top of other attacks, that's very beneficial. But the main reason why you're running it with the club build, of course Claws, it's Claws, it's the strongest card in the deck. Um, but it, with the club build, it's just there to refill your hand. We are then playing two Sand Sketch Plans. This is a Time Snap Potion on demand. Um, so it happens that turn and everything has the Intim trigger. Um, the main card that I am usually searching for this is actually Pulping or Pact Hunt, depending on the matchup. Because you want to always search out a card that is going to be able to just qu a quick play. Um, this has Go again, or it gives you two action points so you can swing club afterwards. Um, so yeah, that's Sand Sketch Plan. Blue blocks for three. You'll notice the thing about this, basically every card in this deck blocks for three. Then we have two Arg Smash. Um, these are in here for the dash matchup, um, but you can also leave the um, Arg Smashes in here for decks that you're worried about that you're going to deck out to. So uh, that's where the Arg Smashes come into. We then play a small package of one tear limb from limb and then one e pot. A lot of the time, you can just cut the tear limb from limb and just play the one e pot. It is very strong against, um, let's say, like, uh, uh, like wizards. You can put it down, but then also just having the extra uh, resource as well. One thing I like to do is play an e pot and then have Tunic with uh, three counters, and then crack both and play an Alpha Rampage. And then the one gold, uh, Gorganian Tome. I personally love this. This turns into your deck into a 59 card deck. Um, if your opponent is playing Gorganian Tome, I guess it does suck, but you only play Gorganian Tome if you are playing Claws. And you wanna run a 60 card deck. That's when you play Gorganian Tome. You want to see your Blood Rush Bellows as quick as possible. You play this against Dash so that you can see Arg Smashes quicker. And then we'll go into our defense reactions. Two Reckless Swing. You take these out against Chain. You want every card in your deck to block. But Reckless Swing. I think I only killed one player during the day with Reckless Swing. And that was enough for this card to be amazing. It's blue, blocks for four. Sometimes um, you can use it against a a, um, a Razor Reflex play. And just by it slowing down the tempo hard enough uh, and just playing the Reckless Swing, even though you, you might end up with no cards in hand, is very worth it. They can trigger their Mask, they can snap their Snapdragon Scalers, they can go really hard against you. And yeah, it, it's Reckless Swing. We then have two snags. I put snags in against Boltons, so depending on what type of Bolton, but um, these will stop the V for the Vanguards. And of course, against Chain. You need these against Chain. This is another essential card that you want to play against Chain. It turns off an entire turn um, of an insane damage. So yes, two snag. I've got three Springboard Somersaults. This is a very hard card to use. A lot of the time you will draw into your hand and you don't want to see it, but it'll be one of those turns where if you don't have a card in your arsenal or you can use your card in the arsenal to arsenal this, that's where this card is very strong. And if you can just like have one in arsenal, play it, and then you draw into one, this still just by blocking with one from uh, from Arsenal and then blocking one from hand, that's still six. So it's fair enough. If you are a little bit scared of playing um, uh, Springboard Somersaults, 
You could just play the two, but I still prefer to play three. Um, you have three fate for scene and then three sync below. Your main package against chain is to block every single attack out once they get to eight shackles, they should be by the, like, they should have lost. They have no cards left in deck and just block off every single turn, get one uh, big attack in and you should win. Hopefully. And, yeah, that... Also, the Fate for Scenes and Sync Belows, you can run in your 60 card build when you are versing with um, the Gorgonian term with your claws, so that you can cycle cards out to get your get to your Blood Rush Bellows a lot quicker. Um, these cards, I'm going to say, are staple. Especially going into the future metas as well. So we'll go on to our attack actions. I have a package of three um, Smash Instinct Yellow, three Riled Up, I have three Bergen Big Horns, and then I have the must of um, Beast Within. Beast Within is probably the one of the most important cards of the deck. Beast Within allows you to draw an extra card. Usually you might take two, three, four damage, but the extra card goes extremely far in Rhino. Um, the Intim triggers, and even if you just have to swing for six, this card is good enough just to swing for six. It like, it, it's strong enough. And then you've got your Riled Up, same same case. If you, you can swing for six on your off turns and all that, but then off a turn with a um, Blood Rush Bellows, it is going to be swinging for seven. Um, a very good tempo play is just to swing with a Smash Instinct into one card, forcing either two or uh, one or two blocks. And then your Embarrassing Big Horn. As I was stating earlier with um, the the uh, Embarrassing Beatdowns, a lot of heroes do not like to block with two cards. So if you can get a Embarrassing Big Horn, you are forcing two cards out of their hand or their arsenal or their defense reaction. So just swinging by six and then having like a, a resource floating and a tunic counter, you are forcing an extra five damage that they are forced to block. And then we'll go with the, the simple, easy blue package. You've got your Wrecker Rump and your uh, Savage Feast. Wrecker Rump, 6 attack. I, it's, it's amazing. And then you've got Savage Feast. I chose Savage Feast out of the big package of other blue cards. Just because you could tempo it out, like draw, if you are in a tough situation. You could play Savage Feast like into a um, like discarding a massacre and then drawing a card and swinging with club if you roll scabs. I don't recommend it, but I feel like Savage Feast was the correct play. I didn't play it all weekend, but I don't think I'd still cut it. If I were to, it would be with a swing fist thing later. And then we'll go on to the package. This is the new package that I'm always playing with Riot R. Three Swing Fist Think Later, three Breakneck Battery, and three Pulping. These cards, make sure you don't need to roll Scab Skin Leathers. Swing Fist Think Later is a mini alpha rampage. It is in Tim 1 if you discard a 6, you swing for five, uh, 4, and then you swing for 5 with Club. That's leaking 1 damage and then 2 damage. I really like this card. Um, a lot of the times you'll see it in hand, you, what you want to do is arsenal it, um, get to a turn where you get a blue and a red, or like blue and a six, and then swing with it. Breakneck Battery is a turn where you discard a six attack. Um, it has go again, but you want to pitch a blue and have a tunic trigger, so you can swing for six and then swing for five with Romping Club. And then Pulping. Pulping is a very, like, very hard card to use, in my opinion. Um, just because the variance of it. If you can, like, read the top card of your deck off the, um, off a of Fate for Scene, this is amazing. But a lot of the times, you want to use these in certain scenarios. So, this is very good against Katsu when you're running your club. Um, and the Dominate is absolutely insane during the late game, forcing a block 
uh, like forcing an arsenal block, forcing a block from hand, and the intim trigger as well. Um, Pulping was one of the worst cards in my opinion, but now after running it for so long, I will say it's very strong, but it's still not the strongest card just because it doesn't block. But Pulping, if you can know how to use it correctly, you should use it. And then we'll go on to the red package of other six attacks. Two Command and Conquer. Um, this was a very hard decision to make if I was running two or three. And it came down to that if I want to play a Blood Rush Bellows, I want to see another um, Brute attack. And playing two is the correct number in my opinion. I will see a Command and Conquer early and I'll just use my Goliath Gauntlet on it. Um, if I see late game, I can use my Goliath Gauntlet onto it. You are playing a slow, kind of controly, very annoying deck. So the more annoying cards that you have that um, can interact with your opponent, the better. But to Command and Conquer, only because if I'm playing Blood Rush Bellows, I want to um, see another 6 attack that is a, a Brute attack to gain the extra plus 2. We then have our two, uh, three red pact hunt. Um, a very strong card. Um, I usually only use it to swing for six, but there are cases where you can go like a swing fist and glado, then play a pact hunt that's into me two and swing for four and six. Very strong. And then we've got the OGs, we have the massacres and the alpha rampages. Massacre comes up a lot as an attack more than it does a discard these days. Massacre, in my opinion, if you do not have Massacres, you could play um, Smash Instinct Red. It is a better tempo play because it is swing for 7 and has the Intim trigger. Uh, yeah, the Intim trigger. But a Massacre off a Blood uh, Alpha Rampage off a, um, a playing a, a Barraging Beatdown is an extremely powerful play uh, intiming 4 out of their hand against the ninja matchup um, you are able to like make sure that they can't play with defense reaction from their arsenal so yeah this is my Reinar deck um, there isn't a lot that I would change um, I felt like I played to the best of my ability with Reinar and I'm happy that I stuck to playing with Reinar because it's what I felt most comfortable with. And, you know, it's it's my boy Reinar. I literally have him, <laughs> like, as a poster. But, yeah. Um, I As I stated at the start of the video, I will be making uh, Reinar guides in the future on how to play Reinar correctly. It's going to be a series that I really want to make and I hope a lot of people do like. Because now that a lot more heroes are coming out and all that, and everyone's getting hyped over all these new combo decks and all that, Reinar really does shine. Because he is able to play around on his own game because of the Intim triggers. Because he's able to go for extreme damage on turns. He has amazing matchups against most heroes like Prism, like Wizard. And yeah... Um, I love Reiner, I can stick with him for the rest of my life, and thank you for watching the video, and I never shill myself out, but please subscribe if you want to see Reiner content. That's the main thing I want to say, if you want to see my Reiner content in the future, I really recommend to subscribe to my channel. Anyways, that's it for the video. Next time I'll come first! <laughs> Alright, peace.